this video is gonna be a little bit different and we're gonna talk about what people don't tell you when you move overseas. There's this idealized picture of what being overseas is like and how it's so much different, so much better than living in your home country. But of course, there will be some struggles there. I hope this video proves useful to you when you move abroad. Know that you're not alone and that these struggles are struggles that everybody who moves overseas experiences. Oops. Welcome to my tiny kitchen. I have a really small space and anyway, I'll give you my first point. The first point with moving overseas is that you will feel kind of dumb even if you speak the language. Of course, when you move overseas, you are constantly learning, adapting, exploring. And with that comes this feeling of not really knowing how to communicate properly so that people, so that locals would understand you. What I found when I moved here in New Zealand is that even if I knew how to speak English, there were ways with which Kiwis would talk. They had their own terminologies, they had their own accent. I remember being so intimidated by the way Kiwis talked because I really could not understand them. When I would receive a call on my mobile phone, I would get really really anxious and not answer. Apart from that, here in New Zealand they use um, like the British form of English so some of their terms are not the same as the American terms that I grew up with. Let's say for example when we say garbage, dito in here they say rubbish. If you go to a pharmacy, you are going to the chemist. And if you want to buy a late night snack, let's say in 7-Eleven, they call it the dairy. You don't just buy milk in the dairy here. You buy your chips, your crisps, your lollies. So really the only way that you will be able to get over this is through constant exposure. It took me maybe a year to finally understand people on the phone and really just over the years I grew more confident with uh, speaking in Kiwi English. It's also useful to find a community that relates to your struggles, your fellow Filipinos, your fellow overseas uh, workers. If you find this community, you could, you could talk through it with them. You'll realize that the struggles that you have are the same as with everyone else's and that way you won't really feel crazy. Number two, making friends is hard. The combination of moving overseas and being an adult can be a hard combination when it comes to making friends. Of course, trying to form new relationships in a different environment means that there is a clash of routines, of schedules, and of already established friendships. And then also you have to consider the cultural barrier and maybe even the language barrier. For me personally, it was a struggle to find local friends. I found that New Zealanders are super, super friendly. They will strike up a conversation with you, but when it comes to actually being part of their circle, that's a different thing. It's unlike in the Philippines where you could easily make friends with anyone and they'll invi invite you to their group after just a few conversations, and here it's quite different. It's not like that. So if you do find yourself in that situation, you really have to go out of your comfort zone and find some meetup groups. So there are apps such as Meetup where people with common interests could like come together and all, and then just meet up and just, just talk or do activities together. You can also take classes, you can take part in exercise groups. Really just go out of the routine of going to work or studying, then going home. So I can proudly say that after six years of being here, I have made friends with uh, a handful of locals. So I know that I have one Kiwi friend, one American friend. I'm sure I have a lot more acquaintances here. Oh, can I just say that even just inviting your colleagues at work or your classmates out for a coffee, that also really, really helps with establishing friendships. Now this was one of the hardest uh, things that I learned is that time is going to freeze for you, for your home country, but then all of your family and friends will of course have their own lives and move on. The image that I had of the Philippines when I moved in 2017 is still the same image that I have of it now. The picture that I have of the Philippines is hasn't really changed. You'll see that your family and your friends, even without you, 
they will have their own separate lives, they will have transitions in their lives, they will have new core memories. A lot of my friends have gotten married, have had kids, kids I haven't even met yet, spouses I haven't even met yet. It'll feel like you have been left behind sometimes. Really, I think the only way to get over this feeling of homesickness is to be sure to really schedule some time to talk to your family and friends. You cannot just talk to them when you feel like it. You have to set aside a certain time, a certain day, for you to catch up with your closest people. I think it really also helps to set up a sinking fund that is a budget for each payday that you set aside so that you could spend it on a specific thing. So let's say for example, you set aside a certain amount each payday for a plane ticket back home whenever it's Christmas. So by the time that you are ready to purchase your flight, you have the money on hand and you're not struggling to find money to be able to pay for that flight. It really helps to plan ahead so that the homesickness kind of abates and you have a way of coping with it. The fourth point is the imposter syndrome. When you are overseas, there's this feeling of not knowing if you're doing the right thing, if you are dumb for doing what you do, if you're dumb for not knowing what you don't know. Of course, as you adjust to different ways of living, to a different culture, there will be times when you will feel like I really don't belong here. That was my feeling when I was in the workplace. I remember when I was a part-timer for this media company and I was surrounded by journalists who knew what to do. I was surrounded by fellow part-timers who knew what they were doing and they were super enthusiastic about getting news, about crafting their own story, whereas I, I did not know what exactly New Zealanders wanted in their stories, what exactly I would have to say to make people understand the point of my story, etc. That feeling of not belonging, of not knowing what to do, really sabotaged me and it resulted to me being replaced by somebody else because I thought if I didn't know what to do, then I might as well not do anything. This uh, feeling of being an imposter, I think you have experienced that wherever you may be, whether you're at your home country or if you're overseas, it is a feeling that will persist. It is kind of like your alter ego living rent-free in your head. It's always gonna be there. There really is no solution to it other than to live with this feeling of fear. Really, the only way to get over the imposter syndrome is to acknowledge it and to work your way despite it. It's really just about being bold and really just faking it till you make it. This is my fiance, Frank. Hello. The last point that we want to make is that everyday life is life. Is life. When the magic of moving overseas fades, you'll find that your daily life is still going to be the same as when you were home. You're still going to have the same struggles. You're still going to have the same problems. There really is no excitement that will come to you unless you seek it. Like, let's say for you, you moved uh, to New Zealand for six years now. Mm -hmm. Was it exciting at the beginning? Yeah, it was very exciting at the beginning. And after, you just go, you know, under your everyday life. So everything become normal at some stage. Obviously, yeah. When the honeymoon phase is over, it's yeah. over. Yeah, just like in a honeymoon, there's a honeymoon phase for living overseas. Once that sparkle fades, it's pretty much gonna be the same as everyday life. So that's everything that I have to share. If you were able to relate, do let me know in the comments below. It's nice to know when people understand your struggles. As always, if you found this useful, do subscribe to my channel. Really hoping to get to know more of all of you. Let's keep updated. This is your Tita Abroad signing off. Paalam! <laughs>